welcome back to Teach and Reach YouTube channel. I am Loretta Holmberg with VIP Kid. On this channel, you will find ESL online strategies, tips, as well as other learning strategies and tips that might be helpful to you as an online teacher in different platforms. So for today, I am going to concentrate on the new VIP Kid uh, TEFL certification, uh, teaching English as a foreign language. Uh, it is the new certification that is being offered to all teachers um, in the last few days. And I just completed um, my part one, right? So the next part is where um, I have to, 10 of my classes have got to get like uh, uh, four Apple or five Apple feedback and above before I get the certification. So if you are wondering whether or not you should embark and take this TEFL certification, well, tune in and watch my recommendation at the very end. So in the TEFL certification, there is a part one and a part two. Part one is where you have four modules to complete. After each module, you have to take um, uh, a quiz. They call it a self-check questioning. Um, 20 questions per quiz. Um, and it's out of 100%, obviously. Uh, module one is um, second language acquisition and learning. This is where you're going to learn all about question and all the different hypotheses, um, all the different um, uh, theories about um, second language acquisition and how best to help the children learn. And then you take the quiz, all right? You are allowed to take the quiz three times. The questions that you make mistakes on, you are allowed to redo those questions. Uh, and they give you um, three minutes per question um, to redo it. I've not had to retake any. Um, I've passed on each, uh, each module quiz um, the first time around, okay? Um, module two is online second language acquisition in teaching uh, principles and methodologies. Uh, these are the things that you probably already know, you know, scaffolding and TPR, things like that, right? Uh, module, module three is where um, it's teaching English to Chinese young learners. And this is where there's a big concentration on uh, language learning strategies, social and affective strategies that you can use. It talks about multiple intelligences, intelligences learning styles, um, feel dependent, feel independent, um, conducting a needs analysis at the very beginning of a class to determine where your learners are, um, characteristics of successful um, second language learners. And, and it's very, very specific to Chinese learners. Um, and it also talks about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and the factors that affect the learners and its environment and how best the learner is going to be successful in your class. And module four is where um, they go through the techniques and strategies in teaching online. Um, there is a whole section on uh, personalized instruction in online classroom, what it is, what is personalized instruction and learning, what should it look like, what does learner engagement look like, uh, what is positive teacher behavior that's going to help enhance the learning experience for the learner, uh, the parent expectations, going through um, Chinese parents' expectations, um, and also um, it also goes through the technology and professionalism in the online classroom and um, hardware that you need um, for you to be successful in, in this online classroom, um, as well as teaching techniques and strategies in the online um, classroom. So that includes um, language learning techniques and strategies. Um, and in every single module, there, um, there are at least um, six to seven case studies that um, offers you a description of what's happening in the video that you're going to be watching and key takeaways as well as evaluation of what happened. Um, I will talk more about the videos in the later part of this of this video. Uh, but yeah, it's there for you to be able to uh, watch um, experienced teachers teaching um, with critique and uh, not really critique, really key takeaways and evaluation of the teaching and how it's helpful or um, how it's helpful to the learner. Some of the advantages of having the TEFL certification on your page as a badge for parents to see is that obviously the parents can see that you took the TEFL certification and another certification is always helpful uh, when parents decide whether or not to choose one teacher um, over another teacher, right? Um, so that's why I want to do it. But other reasons are um, it also going through all the different modules, it um, it's like a refresher course of what is expected of you as an online English teacher. Um, 
working with a Chinese learner, right? Um, I think I think it provided a lot of good um, uh, basic foundational knowledge for those who are not familiar with it, as well as a good refresher for those who are already familiar. And I mean, it jogged my memory and I was like, oh yeah, I need to do that more often or I'm, I'm already doing this, so I'm good, I'm good. So that was how I was feeling when I was taking, um, the, uh, when I was reading all the different modules and watching the videos and all that. So um, how long did it take me? Um, well, I started off, um, I wanted to do it on Friday, but it kept on um, freezing on me. <laughs> I didn't do it until um, Sunday past midnight. So that's like early Monday morning, right? Like 12.10. Um, after teaching a class or two, I decided, oh, well, just going to take a shot at this. And it was great because it wasn't freezing up on me. Stuff was going like really, really quickly. Um, I finished two modules and then I went to sleep. Um, and today, today's Monday, uh, right after I finished my... Um, 8.30 class that ended at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I did the other two modules and I wanted to make sure that I could beat the, because I think they're updating um, right about now, actually. They're right uh, updating right about now. And so um, it's 12 noon here. Um, and I know they were updating between 12 and 12.50 Beijing time, uh, I guess midnight over there, right? Um, so I was trying to beat that, that the clock and I did. Um, the the most frustrating thing is is the fact that uh, the videos in the case studies take a long time to load or they keep buffering so i'm gonna be very frank some for some of the modules i did not get to watch any of the videos because it kept on going buffering 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 or it would play and then it would buffer 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 um i didn't want to just want to sit there so i just read everything it's a good thing that i'm a visual learner so reading I can comprehend it really, really easily. And then you would click complete and it goes to the next section. Um, the problem is sometimes after you click complete, um, it doesn't go to the next section immediately. Um, you kind of have to wait and wait and then you gotta click it again. And then it will tell you it's being transmitted. Just wait. Uh, well, sometimes it doesn't go to the next section. So I have to like, close out and then go out of my app and come back in again. It takes a lot of patience to do all the four different modules um, and perseverance to finish it. Um, so the modules also take too long to load sometimes. I found that when I was doing it um, at midnight to about two o'clock, it was a lot faster than doing it this morning. Um, I mean, it's Memorial Day today. And so I bet a lot of folks are also doing it and also on the platform. So they, they obviously don't have a good um, enough support for the stuff that they want us to do. So I hope they rethink that part. Um, also, there is a timer on the bottom of each slide and it goes for like 59 seconds. Yeah, 59, a minute. Um, for some of the slides, it only takes you about maybe like 20 seconds to read everything because it's very short. But you can't go to the next section until you until the timer reaches zero 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 and then you can mark as complete so i'm sitting there i'm waiting so you know i'm not going to reread stuff because it's like really simple reading um so i'll go do something else for the next you know i don't know like 40 seconds more and then come back to again try to mark complete and sometimes it goes to the next section and sometimes it doesn't so it can be fr very frustrating um so that time right there is pretty annoying because <clears throat> I finished reading the page like about I don't know, 30 seconds ago and now I gotta wait till it counts down to zero so that I could mark complete. So that takes up a lot of time, you know, just sitting and waiting. Make sure, you know, if you're a coffee drinker or, um, I don't know, some fun drink <laughs> to drink while you're doing this assessment so that you don't get bored of just waiting. Or make sure you have something that you can um, navigate back and forth with while you're doing this. Um, also, if you, if you um, do a section and then you don't mark complete, um, you go to something else and you come back, there is a, a, a little um, 
pop-up box that asks you whether you're still there, whether you're still um, uh, completing the, 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 the reading, whether you're still there, and you can just mark OK. So my take on this, that despite all the frustration, oh, the other, the other pet peeve of mine is that there were um, grammatical errors There were grammatical errors and formatting errors on the slide. So some of the words were running together. Um, there were just glaring grammatical errors. And I, I, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope someone will proofread that and kind of, I don't know, maybe they can edit it so that folks who are taking the different modules uh, won't see those errors. Um, it is, they're very glaring. And, um, and for someone like me, it, it can be, it's probably it probably grates on my nerves a lot because like if you're if you're a platform that's you know teaching English for foreign learners right and um you don't have proper English in the written portion of a professional development course hmm, it's not too good right so anyhow um so if you're still thinking about whether or not you want to take this TEFL I highly recommend it I think it's a good refresher course for those of you who have been teaching. For some time already and um for the newbies um i think it's really good as well because then you get an extra badge and um it might an extra badge that parents can see on your profile on their end and it might be good to help with increased bookings i don't know whether it's going to increase bookings but you know any additional certification that parents can see on your uh, profile if they compare if they don't know two teachers and they're comparing it they're probably going to pick one that has got more certification so um, my recommendation is that you do it. Just be prepared that you're probably going to take a little bit longer than um, than what it should take, just because of the bugs in the system. So, if I were to collectively think about how long it took me, uh, it probably took me about maybe about three hours, three hours, fifteen minutes between uh, midnight last night as well as this morning until I complete everything. So, don't think twice about it. Do it. You just don't have to pay the seventy nine seventy nine dollars um, to get the certificate um, if you don't want to. I'm not going to um, because I'm only going to be teaching this VIP kit um, for the ESL portion. Um, all right. Well, helpful to you and um, happy tefling. Stay safe. Keep smiling. Keep shining. And the best is yet to come. Bye.